I'd like to continue with a topic uh, which Professor Banagura started. I will tell you a couple of words about the evolution of uh, uh, influenza virus. Genetic adaptation of viruses is quite an uh, acute uh, matter. We all talk about uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus and those mutations which might appear when this virus is adapt, uh, adapted, and also about those mutations which could affect effectiveness of uh, immune response. Along with that, when we talk about the evolution, but, but talk the adaptation, first of all, we mean some amino acid uh, substitutions which we can see in uh, viral proteins. Those uh, substitutions, on one hand, Mm, determine adaptation when transferred from one host to another. In case of the flu virus, it's uh, uh, transmission from the uh, avian viruses uh, or from porcine viruses to humans on one hand. On the other hand, uh, during evolution into the human populations, there is also permanent mutations happen uh, and replacements which uh, result that uh, immune system uh, got used to the virus, antibodies uh, developed, and virus start to, uh, pr uh, so to say, uh, protect from those uh, mechanisms, and some uh, muta immune mutations also happen. And at the same time, we talk about the immune acids and uh, uh, substitutions in those proteins. In our works, we wanted not to talk only about uh, substitutions, but also uh, look at the RNA molecule and look at the role of uh, secondary structures of uh, genome uh, segments uh, with regard to viral evolutions. So one of our purposes was uh, flu virus and one of the genes which encode uh, uh, one of the genes in uh, segment 8, which encodes two main uh, segments of uh, uh, flu virus. First, uh, protein NS1, it's, uh, which is we see here, it's one first uh, or main non-structural protein. Its main function is uh, being uh, interferon antagonist, so, so it regulates uh, uh, immunity response. On the other hand, it's one of the most multifunctional uh, proteins of the flu virus. It, uh, it's responsible for uh, dozens or hundreds of interactions between the virus uh, and the uh, host cell. Another uh, gene, it's NAP, nuclear export protein. Its main function is to export uh, genome segments from a nucleus into cytoplasm. You can see the structure of the gene uh, here. So you see a mRNA encoding NAP uh, develops uh, as a lot of alternative splicing. And the works uh, before us showed that this uh, uh, plus th th thread of this uh, uh, RNA contains some secondary structures. And those stru structures are located near the splicing sites. This was discovered about 10 years ago. And, uh, and the role of those secondary structures uh, we started to study them uh, ever since. First, we did in silico analysis, and we tried to understand if those structures are conservative in human uh, uh, in human viruses, and if those structures change with time. This slide uh, shows some phylogenetic schematics for each of the uh, so from each of the uh, sections. At the left, you see changes of the secondary RNA structure in the segment one, which is located in the region 82-148 nucleotides, and second in the second uh, region of uh, 497 to 564. Mm. So this phylogenetic tree was built, uh, dated from uh, uh, 1814. Uh, it's uh, uh, fr uh, from the uh, so uh, from the date the flu uh, Spanish virus was uh, discovered uh, and uh, and it, it was uh, prognosed with this uh, uh, software. This uh, 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 these structures have so-called uh, stem uh, structures. We analyzed uh, all uh, sequences presented in databases uh, to see if the structure uh, remains during the evolution. So this data you can see at this slide. Looking about the talking about the evolution, all modern flu virus actually are descendants of this virus of 1918. And if you look at the structure of uh, evolution, we can see, we can notice that initially this virus uh, uh, changed. It was pandemic, then it became the season one, and the structure in the first region remained the same as this uh, stem loop structure. Then, when next pandemic happened, which uh, resulted in H2N2 virus development, <coughs>
considers uh, phylogenetic tree, the structure also was quite stable. Well, the next pandemic was pandemic 1968, which resulted in uh, appearance, uh, appearance of new virus, H, uh, H3N2, and this virus in this gene, which is also was taken from the virus of 1918, we see changes of the secondary structures. So as a result, such structure was formed, which is not already a stem loop. If you look uh, at the evolution of uh, not only human but also porcine viruses, you could see that all modern porcine viruses, they also uh, descend from this pandemic virus of 1918. And as you can see here, secondary structure has changed a bit, uh, and uh, it remained is uh, looking like that till now. Why porcine viruses are important? Because this NS gene, which is descended, uh, which was obtained from the 1918 virus through porcine, then it, it was uh, uh, moved to uh, uh, pandemic virus of uh, 2009, so this porcine uh, uh, influenza, and it's still, e e you can see it in the flu structure. In parallel, we see a structure of virus H by N1, and it's highly pathogenic viruses, and we can see they have such a stem loop structure, it was quite conservative, and it was uh, similar, uh, similar retained as it H1 in one virus. Similar phylogenetic status, uh, so, so similar phylogenetic story was studied uh, for the second uh, region. But if you look at the modern viruses, we can see that this uh, uh, stem loop structure, uh, which uh, ex uh, existed in the uh, 1918 virus, it is remained in H1 and one virus. It also could be seen uh, being changed a bit in uh, H1 and one virus of uh, 2009, then H2 and 2 and H3 and 2, the structure disappeared. And, th and as you can see here, uh, there is no stem loop structure. So thus we can clearly say that during evolution, especially during the formation of new uh, subtypes of uh, uh, type A virus, uh, secondary structures change. So the key question here is the form. So we do see it. We see changes of the part of the structure, but is there any functional, so to say, uh, value? And to answer this question, we did experiments. Uh, we selected four structures. Here's a presented this slide. First is a structure from virus H1 and 1 in the first area, so typ uh, typ uh, typical spin loop structure. The another structure was taken from uh, one, two, two and from Great Britain. It was taken as a reference sequence. And then two structures, uh, uh, spin loop structure and non-spin loop structure, were taken from uh, viruses of uh, uh, the second region, in the second region. So we specifically took those sequences, which we could see in natural viruses, not to introduce those mutations, which we do not see in uh, natural settings. So, so the substitution is present here. Uh, and so these substitutions, uh, replacing uh, uh, the synonymic, the synonymic one, synonymous ones, they don't result in uh, amino acid changes. In the second region, non, uh, uh, we, we haven't found any uh, synonymous uh, substitutions, so some changes resulted uh, in changes of uh, amino acid. Um, so why it's important? What, why we talk about the amino acid uh, uh, replacement or substitutions, we uh, we cannot say that there could be immune secondary structure because amino acids, of course, they might affect uh, this issue. But looking at the publications, we never found any data that these amino acid substitutions could actually result in changes of some uh, protein uh, uh, features of NS1 and NAP proteins, uh, and they. Uh, could be uh, uh, there could be uh, some immunobiochemical changes, so we can cautiously assume that changes, so this uh, contribution of those substitutions will not be considerable, and it will be uh, mm, uh, determined by the uh, so to say nucleotide substitutions. Then we use a reverse genetic technique to uh, find viruses. Uh, which are identical, but uh, different only with those nucleotide substitutions, which result in the changes of um, uh, spatial structure. So prior to doing this, uh, prior to that activity, we needed somehow to prove that those in silico uh, uh, forecasts of secondary structure uh, can, can be seen in vitro, but not uh, rather than being just uh, computer modeling results not related to reality. Here we used quite a simple technique. We used uh, uh, also, we obtain those segments, 
uh, through RNA in vitro transcription, and we use uh, electrophoretic uh, separation in denaturating and native settings. And as you can see, electrophoretic mobility of those structures in native settings was different. So it means that, in fact, uh, uh, identical nucleotide sequences uh, show different mobility determined by different conformation of those uh, structures of uh, gene NS1. And in the settings of, uh, in the dendritic settings, we see the mobility is similar. So we proved that the uh, uh, forecast of those secondary structures in NS protein is different in real settings. Then. Through reverse genetic approach, we, uh, we obtained four viruses. We call them one one with having uh, uh, with this uh, spin loop structure um, in both structures one zero. When we have in uh, one case not another, then uh, zero one with uh, and zero zero. After collecting those viruses, we did some analysis using in vitro and vivo techniques in order to find out if uh, uh, there are some changes in properties of those viruses determined by some specific mutations uh, which uh, introduce changes into that secondary structure. I don't want to dwell upon uh, in details with that. We study infectious activity of virus uh, in the various cellular uh, cultures and, um, and we found no statistical significant differences between those viruses. Also we studied uh, various uh, uh, growing curves of those viruses and we wondered but no significant changes were seen uh, with different uh, cell cultures. At the same time, we wanted to see if we don't see any in vitro changes and infectious activity, maybe we could talk about some differences in the level of the NS gene expression and translation of two proteins it encodes, I mean NS1 and NEP. So this slide shows data on two cell structures. When we studied those four recombinant viruses which were created, and we found out that there are some uh, uh, changes with regard to the NS gene. First of all, the ch uh, difference between, first of all, between the genes 1-0 and the viruses without uh, spin loop structure in their first uh, regions. So we used it ELISA. Uh, using the immunoblotting, we studied uh, active translation of uh, NS1 and NAP proteins. And looking at the um, slide, you can see there were some differences. In particular, you can see the data on two cell lines, and they show that uh, some there were some differences uh, with expression of NS1 and uh, NAP gene. At the next stage, we checked RNA uh, expression levels. At this slide, none of those viruses with us, uh, mRNA of NS1 and NEP showed any difference. Uh, and uh, finally, we take a look if there is any difference with regards to transcripts of uh, NS1 and NEP, so no difference was found. So, and we concluded that, uh, indeed, presence of those structures in separate, in specific uh, regions could result in changed expression of NS1 and NEP genes, uh, but those changes are controlled at the translation level, because at transcription level, no significant significant differences were detected. Then, coming back to previous slides, we checked that there are changes at the level of uh, NS gene expression, but in vitro, no considerable differences, or, I mean infectious activity or titers were not detected, so we wanted to check if it could be uh, expressed or could be seen only in vivo, in in vivo settings, so we used a murine uh, infection model. At first stage, we selected all uh, infectious doses, so lethal and infectious doses, and did such experiments. So we observed four virus uh, types. So. Though in vitro there were no significant differences, in vivo differences uh, were detected. As you can see at the slide, you could see the data for both uh, virus titration and the data on decreased of uh, uh, mice weight. And so we can see at the slide that for one of the viruses, it's a virus uh, zero 01, meaning a virus where the spin loop structure is present in the second region but absent in the first region. They showed significant differences with regard to pathogenicity versus other viruses. You see, his you see that here's a significant low infectious activity at early stages, and looking at the decrease in mice weight, this virus is less pathogenic. So thus we managed to show that those secondary structures, or they are specific variants, they could affect expression of an S gene. 
And also for some variants, it could be some pathogenicity factor, which was confirmed in animal uh, experiments. And finally, some uh, conclusions. So according to in silico method, uh, influenza A virus has line-specific spe line patterns of uh, second RNA secondary structures. We collected recombinant variants uh, differing in this uh, predicted secondary structure. Uh, and uh, we showed those also the mutations in vitro result in changes of that structure. That we showed that uh, changes of the second structure of, of uh, NS gene in uh, NS gene mRNA uh, didn't affect um, expression of genes. And uh, we showed the combination of second structures in region one and two affects translation of uh, the of uh, the NAP protein. And formation of those spin loop structures in the second region and their absence in the first region of the NS gene leads to decreased uh, uh, expression of the NEP propane in cell structures and uh, cell cultures in the, uh, the early stage of infection. And the virus with absence of an mRNA uh, spin loop structure in the first region and presence of it in the second region, the NS gene mRNA, has lower pathogenicity versus other um, uh, murine viruses. Such work was rather of a search type, but we can make let's say that pathogenicity and adaptation factors are not amino acid substitutions in proteins, which we can observe, but also that secondary mRNA structures might be of importance with that regard. At the end, I would like to thank main authors who uh, talk. It's uh, Irina Baranovska, my uh, fellow student. It's going to be the topic of her doctoral thesis for this autumn. Also, Maria Sergeyeva, who was actively involved in this activity, and Alexandra Brodska, which uh, participated in uh, the work, uh, in the works related to in silico um, prognosing.